today I am not in Kaswa, I am in Spintex and I'm here for a really good reason. I'm here because of this man, he is a builder, he's a teacher, he's an artist, he's an engineer, he is so many things. And you see what's behind us, he recently built a helicopter. So this is the helicopter that I built as an ultralight aircraft and I started in 2018. Come on, let me show you how it works. Um, power from the engine is output over here and it connects to the shaft, the two rotor shaft via the V-belt and the pulley system. So as this as this rotates, this will also rotate, right? And the whole thing ends up moving. Amate and I have been friends since I was 11 years old. So we've been friends for eight years now. And it's actually crazy to see how like our life has changed since that. And I'm actually very, very proud of you on your latest achievement. I feel like that is huge. I don't know, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I'm proud of myself. You're proud of yourself? So like your helicopter, what's the name of your helicopter again? Takeoff. Takeoff. Like, yeah. what even inspired you to start? To take no, no, no. Like, to even build takeoff. Like, why? Why did I start? So you were just. I was in school at Chase University. It was my second year. Mm -hmm. And I was in the library. I was, I was actually looking for a second project to do because I had just built a projectile launching apparatus. Okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was looking for something else to do from that like um, something more advanced yeah so and i saw a video of i think an indian guy who was trying to do something similar the helicopter so i think that's where i got inspiration from so you just saw a video about someone building a helicopter and were like shoot i'm gonna do the same thing, to do the same thing yeah. so like how did you even start where did you go about it did you what were you how studying? To, what were you studying in school? That like mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer. Okay, so I mean, you have a little yeah, there's some um, intersection. So, yeah. yeah. Who taught you how to build a helicopter? <laughs> Google, um, YouTube. Google, YouTube. Yeah, and I've been, I've been like that. I like to work with my hands a lot uh -huh. since childhood. So yeah, I knew a little bit of metal working and fabrication. And so you just use your knowledge and. And a lot of YouTube. And a lot of YouTube. Yeah. Ah, thank you, YouTube. And you've been able to build your helicopter. So, like, how old were you when you started building this helicopter? I was 18. You are 18 years? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's actually mad. Are any 18-year-olds watching us thinking of, like, building houses and helicopters and, you know, like, really, really cool stuff? I just want to know. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. should. Because, like, that's a really young age, and at that point in time, like, people don't really have their lives together. People are, like, coming out of high school and just, you know, trying to figure out their life, and you were already, like, building a helicopter. So, like, even with the helicopter, was it, like, a hobby? And how did you even manage to build it? Because I'm also an engineering student, and I know how much time yeah, school it takes. Your, your at my project. Yes. Aeronautics. Yeah, how did you do it being a mechanical engineering student? And this wasn't a school project. It was like... It was a hobby. It was something you were doing on your own. Were you building this thing in school? Yeah, I was building it in school. I started in school. You started in school? Yeah, it was, it was the summer, during the summer of 2018. Summer school. Summer school. Yeah, that's when I started building it. Did you face any challenges? Yeah, I had to. I had to combine it with schoolwork, which yeah. was a big problem because, because if I wanted to follow my art, I would be giving everything, like all my attention to the project and not school. Hmm. So I had to balance it well. That was a challenge. Finding time was hard. Yeah. But you were able to actually achieve. So how long have you been working on this project so far? It's been uh, four years.
years, three years. Four years. Yeah. Three or four years. Three or four years. I think almost four years. Almost four years. Yeah. Wow. And like, how many prototypes have you built? I'm on my fifth one. We're on the fifth prototype. Yeah. Tell us what, what happened with your okay, first, the first one, four prototypes. Each of them had their their different challenges and limitations that have made me go on to the next one. Mm-hmm. The first one was the design itself. It wasn't human friendly. Oh. So in terms of space and like for the cockpit. Okay. Like it was too small. It was too small. It was too small. So I had to go on to another design and post yeah, things like that. So I kept changing, changing. So I got the perfect one that I'm, I'm satisfied with. And so like, what was the biggest challenge that like ran through all five of your prototypes? I would say my biggest challenge is our apart from weight and the fact that manufacturing in aluminum is expensive. Yes, yeah, so I used to it a lot. So that's yeah. the problem. But for aircraft and rotorcraft, like steel is not very yeah, it's not very bad. It's prototyping, but feasible. Okay, but this is a prototype, yeah. so it's your helicopter isn't done. Mm-hmm. You still have a lot of work to do. Is this going to be the final prototype? No, I don't no. Know. no I don't How many prototypes do you think? You probably be counted like 20 prototypes or something? No, not 20. I don't not 20. Oh, your plan is for takeoff to fly <laughs> one yeah. day. Yeah. And how soon do you think that is going to happen? I don't know. I don't know how soon it will happen because I want to focus my time on other projects. Oh. So I can't tell that. Okay, so you're already like drifting away from takeoff already? No, that I'm drifting away. I want to pause a bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Typical engineer. <laughs> okay, so you were talking about how expensive the aluminum costs. Mm-hmm. Like, what other for, um what other materials did you use? Apart from aluminum, uh, I used from... to some parts that are made in plastic and ABS. ABS. Yeah. So, how much did your entire helicopter cost to build? From from the first prototype up to now. It would be around around three thousand to four thousand dollars. Three thousand to four thousand dollars. Did you receive any sponsorship or anything or oh, was mostly Yes, I received sponsorship from HSC Design Lab. It's an institution that school that they like projects like this, so they offer assistance to students and working on projects like that. That is super nice. Like your school actually supported you yeah. on this project. Are you thinking of going into like rotorcraft manufacturing, manufacturing, or this was just so just I'm like a project. random project? So this like a hobby thing. I don't intend to go into manufacturing of rotorcraft. It's yeah. just but like, what do you intend to go into? I want to go into industrial machinery. Okay. So stuff for I don't know recycling, food processing, sanitation, mm-hmm. oil, marine, okay. yeah, machines that that show up in these places. I and like designing machines. Like you mentioned this right now, right? Um, the part of the world that we find ourselves in like needs a lot of industrialization, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And Let's take. Let's come to Ghana. We are trying to start an industrial revolution in Ghana, mm-hmm. right? And right. So, yeah, we are trying. Yeah. And how do you think you can contribute to, to the industrial revolution that we are trying to start in Ghana? Um, yeah, I think we need more um, hands-on engineers, mm-hmm. more practical rather right, than theory. Yes. And the way our educational system is designed, is designed away from, it's more of theory, which yes. isn't really helping because it affects the quality of engineers that we produce. Mm-hmm. So I train, I train students or engineering students on the, strictly on hands-on um, fabrication. So a session in my school involves, you just come to the school and then uh, overall, and then you work, work, work hands on. Oh, in a so lab? In a, in a workshop. Okay. Yeah, so we are minimizing or doing our way totally with theory. 
I mean, theory or theory? yeah, I mean, yeah, theory is helpful, but yeah. like it's the practical aspect that actually gets the job done. Yes, I think it even affects how you understand the theory. Yes, because like, so it depends your understanding. Yeah, of yeah, because even for me, when I'm in school, mm-hmm. like. We go to class and we learn all like the science and physics and stuff. But when we actually go to lab, is when I actually understand the material yeah. that yeah, we are that's learning. Exciting. It will change your approach to whatever you're studying. Yes, yeah. and it actually determines whether you actually want to go into what you are doing or mm-hmm. not because you fully understand what you are doing. So you were talking about training engineering students. You have a school. Or something? Yeah, I have a school. Well, I recently found a school. This lockdown. The name of the school is Mekhaven. Okay, Me- as a mechanical haven, so I train students on fabrication, 3D painting, welding, woodwork, metal work, just to get them to work with their hands. How many other things do you do? Because I've seen that you are also an artist and like a sculp- yeah, I do sculptor. Yeah. So okay. metal work, yeah, like mirrors, wall hangings, yeah, I make those too. Wow. I make That's... those too, like therapy to free my mind from all the engineering straight numbers to keep up my creativity. I got to meet a few interesting people, people that I still know right now. I think that's a major benefit of this whole journey. Uh-huh. I got to learn a lot. Uh-huh. A lot. Yeah. Because if if I look at the prototypes I was developing back then and I compare them to where the ones I've reached now I can see that the things I'm learning. Looking at the work that you've done right now and what you want to achieve with your take off projects, do you feel fulfilled? No, not really. Not I'm really. Not no. So I'm not done. You're not done. Yeah. When, I, when I'm done, then I'll be satisfied. Okay. And you I'm don't know. I'm proud of myself that I've been able to go from prototype one to prototype five. Uh, yeah. And hopefully, prototype five is gonna fly. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. We hope for the best. Okay, so one last thing. Leave a message for your fellow young Africans out there that are trying to figure out their lives. Maybe they are trying to embark on a project or something. Like, tell them. I would say that they should, they should start. I, I don't know, but I find, I think people have the habit of planning, planning, planning. Like, they want to plan everything before they actually start. But even though that is relevant, I think they should leave something to spontaneity and just go into it. Because even if you plan, 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 you end up not doing it, you just end up planning. planning. Ah, yes. I'm not saying planning is not important, but just, just go. And if you were to change anything in Ghana, you change the educational system to make it more practical in terms of engineering? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely focus on more hands-on. That's very cool. Me, Amate, thank you so much You're for granting me this interview. Yeah, like, so I actually traveled all the way from Kasawa just to come talk to this guy and see his helicopter because yeah. I think he's the coolest guy in my circle right now. I'm kidding. No offense to anybody. <laughs> Please. Please. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Kindly hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I'm Mami Sika, your number one Kasawa ambassador. Remember that a brand new era, but life is how you make it. Till next time. I want to shout out to my cameraman. Hey, shout out to my cameraman. Sorry, yeah, my cameraman. Derek, Billy, you want to know?